here we have our titanium oxide mineral, rutile or rutile, either pronouncing is just fine. Um, out of all of the oxide minerals you have on your mineral list, this is going to be um, one of the least distinct minerals. Um, it does come in many different colors. So the two that I have here are going to be like darker, I would say like black to deep gray colored, but rutile can also have a red to a reddish brown color, um, and it can be yellow to yellow gold. It just depends really on the crystal habit, how the crystal is grown, whether or not you're going to see different colors in the area that it's grown in. So these two, I would say, are massive forms of rutile. You can get really beautiful crystals. Um, a lot of times the crystals like to grow in like a fibrous habit in quartz, and we call that rutilated quartz. A lot of times it looks like fine, fine hair is embedded in the quartz. It's really beautiful. Um, but these two are really typical of what you'll see in the field. Um, this kind of dark, blocky sample one of the things, the first thought that I have when I see something like this is, ooh, is it hematite or is it rutile? And um, one of the main differences is the um, crystal faces. So rutile often has um, comes in this massive form where you have some good crystal faces and then you have really good little pockets like this one here where there are more distinct crystals. And this has a lot less, more of a bladed and fibrous look to it. Like this is this pocket right here. You can see that the crystals are more elongate, bladed. Um, they have these kinds of like hairy textures to them. That's not something that you're gonna see with hematite. Um, I also think the color is a little bit different. This is a little bit deeper and the um, you see a lot less oxidation, right? Because now that we don't have iron in the equation, that kind of orangey red tinge is a lot less um, apparent or, and we don't see it as much. This sample here has more of a blocky texture to it, um, but they all have this kind of metallic to submetallic luster but without any really distinct crystal faces. There's one good crystal face right there. One good one. Um, but these kind of blocky forms are really typical, especially for this black rutile. Um, in general, they are pretty, they're pretty hard. They're one of the harder oxide minerals that we have on our list. Um, let's give it a streak and see. They already know this streak takes a little bit more muscle than the rest of them. All right, so the streak here, it's kind of like a duller gray, has a little bit of a sheen to it. This can also be like a red to a reddish brown color, really just depends on the exterior of what it would look like. But this kind of like dull gray is pretty typical, but the hardness of it when I did it on the streak plate was really evident compared to something like the hematite or even um, the ilmenite that we saw earlier, those were really easy to streak and they readily streaked. Um, this is also a tetragonal mineral. It's in the tetragonal crystal system. So compared to a lot of the others, which were hexagonal or they were isometric, this one is tetragonal and finding really beautiful crystals of it um, is a little bit more rare. So it usually does not form in um, well-formed tetragonal forms. Um, let's see, it's also pretty dense. I would say it's definitely not the most dense, right? We don't have any of that iron in there, but um, it's pretty dense. Let's see, what else is there? It's opaque. <laughs> There's really not that much to say about um, ilmenite. The most diagnostic things are going to be that luster, the color. Um, it's very, uh, it's very dense, not super dense, moderately dense. Um, and then if you do find a good crystal, it likes to form in a prismatic crystal habit where it's got a really nice form, kind of bladed, fibrous, just depends. But that's Rutile for you, the titanium oxide and the last oxide on your mineral list.